Hi, my name is Francesco Saverio Tedesco and I work at the Francis Crick Institute uh, in London at, at University College uh, London, where I am a professor of neuromuscular biology and uh, regenerative medicine. I also am a, a clinical lecturer in pediatric neurology at the UCL Great Ormond Street Institute of Child Health and a Great Ormond Street Hospital for Children where I do my, my clinical uh, work. Thank you so much for joining us, Vario. So just to start us off, could you kind of elaborate on what your scientific question is, what you, the kind of research is done in your lab? Our focus is really on, on understanding how uh, is muscle uh, able to repair uh, itself and regenerate, and what can we do to um, enhance this process in diseases where the regeneration doesn't take place properly. And with this in mind, we focus very much on developing uh, either new models to uh, sort of uh, try to understand uh, what happens during this disease process, but at the same time, we also develop uh, the actual treatment, uh, treatments themselves. They are experimental treatment, we say, as in these are not uh, cures that go into patients. These are very early stage work that is mostly done in, in, the, in the tissue culture dish in the lab or in some mouse models. Why do you think that this research is important? What is it building to? Um, maybe you could elaborate a bit more on the kind of disorders that this might go into helping. Um, people might be familiar with muscular dystrophies, for example, with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, which is one of the most uh, common and also one of the most uh, severe. Uh, forms. These are very, you know, very severe and still incurable diseases which essentially uh, lead to progressive muscle wasting and to progressive loss of mobility and ambulation of these children. And this is what we're trying to uh, counteract and, and try to stop um, with, our, uh, with our research. And we also look into uh, other forms of muscular dystrophy, some of which are even more severe than Duchenne. Um, we're particularly interested in some specific forms of congenital muscular dystrophies, which manifest in the early, very early stages of, of uh, infancy. Um, so this tells you already that it's something quite important and relevant to, 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 to study and to try to find a cure. So for the next question, I just, first of all, I want to say that you were recently awarded the uh, British Pediatric Neurology Association McKeith Prize, which is, I believe, for those who've made significant contributions to pediatric neurology research, who yeah. are under 40, is that right? No, no, it's this. I might look older than 40, but yes, it's... No, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> what has been your really exciting discovery recently, or in the last couple of years? has contributed to this. Thank you for mentioning that. Uh, um, this is something very recent and I'm incredibly proud uh, to, um, to have received that award. Um, I guess it's probably more for the sort of overall uh, trajectory of uh, our research program in my lab and, and our discoveries, which I think the key ones that have contributed to the uh, award of this prize are number one, the sort of pioneering studies that we did uh, a few years ago on, uh, on developing new, new gene therapy strategies for Duchenne muscular dystrophies, essentially trying to find a way to uh, build up an artificial chromosome uh, which contains the entire dystrophin gene, which is the gene uh, that causes Duchenne muscular dystrophy and in collaboration with a number of other labs, uh, including uh, long-standing collaborators in Japan, we managed to find a way to use this artificial chromosome as a, as a so-called gene therapy vector to, um, to be used in, uh, in experimental models of muscular dystrophy. Um, another uh, probably even more important achievement has been the, the work that we made to generate uh, muscle-making stem cells from pluripotent stem cells. This could be slightly technical, but essentially, Someone might be familiar with the concept of induced pluripotent stem cells. These are cells that can be generated, can be made from even a skin cell with some specific factor can be turned into a pluripotent cell. And then essentially what we did was to do this process from a patient, from actually several patients with muscular dystrophy, uh, and found the recipe to then bring those cells from the pluripotent state, when they can give rise to any cell type, 
to specific muscle making cell type. And the advantage of having this process uh, um, uh, defined is that then we can make as much muscle as we need. It's an almost uh, a virtual unlimited amount of muscle that we can make from those cells, giving us a, a very uh, useful strategy to, to develop a number of applications with those cells. And lately, uh, taking advantage of this uh, strategy that I just mentioned, we were able to uh, generate the first uh, artificial muscle uh, in three dimensions, completely derived from uh, patient uh, stem cells that we're using now uh, for uh, modeling muscular dystrophy in the lab and try to find uh, treatments that could respond when the muscle is made from patients with muscle diseases. That sounds almost science fiction to someone maybe who isn't <laughs> in this kind of field. I apologize if it was too technical. I've done my best, but sometimes it's No, too... no, it, it was perfect. Um, I just mean, it sounds like there's so much, so much progress has happened in your field since you've maybe done your PhD and your postdoc. And along those lines, what kind of things do you think will be happening in the next maybe five years? What do you think are the up and coming discoveries, the thing that will really move this kind of research along? Of course, I'm biased to mention what we are doing, uh, which I think is very relevant, particularly in the, in the context of the, uh, generating these new models that we can use to test treatments and therapies, but also the actual treatments and therapies themselves are particularly exciting at the moment. You know, we, we're all familiar uh, more or less with the gene editing technology, the so-called genomic surgery, and this was this year's Nobel Prize for, medicine, for chemistry, actually. Um, and there is significant progress made in, in the area of muscle biology and also muscle diseases, and particularly also Duchenne muscular dystrophy, using uh, gene editing. And I think we will see uh, lots of exciting news in the, in the next two or three years in this area. And I won't be surprised if you reach also clinical trials there relatively soon. Um, speaking of clinical trials, uh, now, more than ever, we have uh, lots of different uh, clinical trials with gene therapies uh, for different muscular dystrophies and in general, different neuromuscular diseases. We've seen incredible progress for severe neuromuscular diseases such as spinal muscular atrophy, lately with different types of uh, genetic uh, drugs or gene therapies. And I think we are now gonna be able to see the sort of same progress slowly, but we're gonna get there for other forms of muscular dystrophies in the next couple of years with the different forms of gene therapy. I think that's all we've got time for, but thank you so much for being interviewed, Francesco, our first interview of the series. And if anyone watching wants to find out more about Francesco's work, please uh, have a look in the description on YouTube and there'll be links there to it. Uh, thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye-bye.